If you have a strong company, you are, you are consistent and persistent in pursuing your meaning. What you do change and you have to change is your purpose. Because as you said, markets are changing, people are changing, circumstances are changing. And you, what you can do or should do is be agile in reacting to the market and say, oh, you know, this product is not really fulfilling market or consumer needs. Let's adopt. But you, you can do that because you have a, a strong point of departure. If you have a strong meaning, a strong focus, strong vision, then you apply that in order to change what you do to become more relevant and more differentiating to your customers. Hi everyone, welcome to Designdras, where we interview the most forward-thinking designers and innovative creators on the planet to inspire and help you to reach your full creative potential. In this episode, I chat with Jan Eric Bass, author of Leading Design. Jan is the head of design management at the University of Applied Science in Switzerland, member of board at Vitica, and co-founder of Metrics, the Swiss-based service agency. In the episode, we talk about how the future of businesses actually relies on the ability to design and to create. Many companies fall into the trap after a certain time of existence to focus too much on the business administration of existing processes rather than creating new ones. So tons of insights on the intersection of business and design. I hope you enjoy the episode. All right, so I'm here today with Jan-Eric Bass. Thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me on, on your podcast. Yeah, sure. So you're the author of Leading Design. It's a book about design leadership and about how companies can strive on using design as a strategic element uh, in their company strategy. And Really excited to go into the learnings there. We already had, I think, a super exciting pre-recording talk. Uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, you shared, I think, already some really great insights, uh, how organizations can emphasize uh, design, what, what organizations might do wrong in context of that, and what would be the benefits. And um, yeah, really looking forward to that. But Jan, I think it would be really great for the audience if you could give them a bit of an outline uh, about yourself. Mm. Um, uh, you have been working in multiple organizations, wearing a lot of hats, making a lot of learnings and uh, had quite a journey. So I think if you could highlight that a little bit for the audience, that, that would be great. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, indeed, it's, uh, it's been a journey. It's, uh, if it's more than 30 years in, in design, and which also makes you think, Jesus, you know, where, where does... The time flies. It's like, it's amazing. It also means that uh, if you're more than 30 years into something, you're more closer to the end of something than the beginning of something. So <laughs> it also means you also look back a lot, I guess. Uh, though I still look forward to um, yeah, having more experiences uh, with design in the world of design. So I'm definitely not done yet. But uh, I started um, my design journey in... Um, yeah, with the beginning of my studies, actually. Before that, I really didn't know what design was. It was a, an unknown world to me. I grew up in a family of, uh, yeah, a lot of artistic work. My mother is uh, an artist, painter, if you want to say so. Teacher, painter. Never really, I mean, still painting a lot. And my house is full of his paintings. My father is a scientist, so... He's somewhere in the clouds, a radio astronomer. So that also means that you grow up in between, yeah, broad, um, let's say, orientations. Mm -hmm. And I never really knew what to do until somebody in the 80s, early 80s said, yeah, there's something like industrial design. It's, it's something between arts a little bit and something between science a little bit mm -hmm. because it's got these, these two extremes into one. And I was really intrigued by this. And I still am trying to find the, let's say, almost seemingly op opposed topics and bring them mm -hmm. together. So mm -hmm. I discovered industrial design and studied it in, in the 80s and, and then ended up at Philips because I'm, I'm Dutch and I wanted and I studied in Germany and I wanted to go back to the Netherlands. So I worked with Philips for almost 20 years. That was a marvelous journey, a great company. And if you really wanted to learn, that was the company to go <laughs> Because mm -hmm. you could, yeah, every day was a, a learning journey. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, great stuff, a lot of also failures and, and mistakes happening and where you could also learn. So that was, a, that was a great company, great people also still out there in the industry. There are tons of Philips people. Then I had a brief um, stopover at Deutsche Telekom and then I left actually the corporate world and... Uh, 
quit it, started my own consulting activities, helping companies, um, in, as you mentioned, strategize with design, and also went into academia, started up or joined the University of Applied Sciences in Lucerne in Switzerland and ran a bachelor program in design management. And now I'm part of the business faculty. Uh, which is also quite interesting to mm -hmm. experience as a as a part of your journey, and I focus on on design management, design strategy, researching also in that field. So, and this is where I currently am. This is the the current etappe of my tour de France in design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, so interesting. And a couple of things we're going to dive into. I want to pick up one thing um, you said. You moved then in your um, academic um, career, basically from being responsible for a design course to the business department, right? Yeah. So is that sort of, I think that kind of aligns kind of well with your book and then maybe also with the evolution of design that you have been seeing the, that it just became more important for the business world. So do you see like a similarity there? Yeah, absolutely. And I think also... What you learn if you if you work in these larger organizations and actually large organization is relative. I mean, it already starts if an organization has maybe 100, 150 people, you have this phenomena called um, silo creation or diversification, as it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you split up the organization in pockets of excellency, of, of capabilities, people capable in engineering, capable people capable of selling or organizing or whatever and this is actually also a reflection of our education system which is also pockets or of capabilities mm -hmm. a design faculty an engineering faculty a humanity faculty a business faculty um so what what you actually learn and discover if you work in organizations is that the biggest struggle these organizations have is to combine those capabilities into a unified capability, an organizational capability. And so having people work together in order to get output or an outcome created, which requires collaboration, a process uh, that, that unites all these different people. So, uh, and this is the, the stuff that I got interested in when, while working in Philips, saying, hey, yeah, we, I'm, the, I'm, the des I'm a designer. I have my own way of working. So I... Uh, my colleagues, the same. These engineers, they're different. Marketeers, they're different. Managers are different. Finance people are different. So how do they work? And how do we work, you know, as a as a company, which mm -hmm. the name already mm -hmm. says it. It's a company of people working together. And then you discover differences. And, and that's what is um, really... Yeah, interests me a lot. And also, I think the move to the business faculty also has to do with this understanding, um, let's say, the other viewpoints and trying to connect different viewpoints, trying to connect different capabilities with the, with the goal to improve the overall quality of what, what is happening. Yeah, so improve the outcome via, via improving the way the people work together, the different Let's say capabilities work together. Mm -hmm. A hundred percent. Um, I think it's so interesting because you mentioned this before about um, the power of you know taking things that are opposite also and um, bringing them together. And uh, mm -hmm. one of the past episodes, I talked uh, with a professor in London, and uh, mm -hmm. she founded a program called BioDesign, and the goal of that is to bring designers and biologists together, right? Uh, because you have scientific, scientific innovations that oftentimes doesn't find application, right? So if you can come from the application and like the, the human needs and uh, sort of the materialization of that technology or that, that scientific uh, achievement and combine it with the actual science, you can create a lot of innovation. And this is just one, this is an example in biology, but like you can find it in all kinds of different areas. I think the the... The power of of uh, of having design collaborating with science, I think, is uh, is really powerful. Uh, do you see um, similar stories in in your learnings? Yeah, I think collaboration in general. If you set up a, an organization with a view to create something 
for customers because that's why you set up an organization. Mm -hmm. Well, you could also set it up to be just be busy, you know, having something, you know, a daily job, which sometimes I think is also pretty important to organizations. You, you, sometimes you enter an organization, you look around and you see, you think of you by yourself, like, I think these people are occupying themselves, you know, <laughs> and want to be away from the streets, as my mother always said, and have, have something to do. But if you, if you have an organization that really is focused on creating outcome for customers or for a market or humanity in general, then you are best off in collaborating in using different capabilities of people by focusing on that outcome and and enrich you know your thinking process your creative process your production process your communication process so all the different things that you need to do in order to bring your outcome to your user your customer or your recipient or whatever that person is personally i think most successful companies are those that excel in this in this common, yeah, in this collaboration, in this working together and using and benefiting the different capabilities to generate great outcome. So yeah, I think if you if you're in 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 whatever industry, bio or pff, you name it, electronics, services, um, and so forth, entertainment, um, if you if you combine um, these capabilities well and you have a common goal, yeah, you're better off. You understand your customer better, you create better solutions mm -hmm. yep. talking about this Jan what is motivating uh, you uh, yourself in in your in the work that you're doing is there something particular that is that is sort of motivating you um yeah I personally always had the feeling that actually I'm I'm not really a good designer um in that sense that I always thought that there were people around me in design with with a way more developed gift of creating outstanding specifications, uh, unique, very relevant specifications for the context they were designing in. But I also discovered that that, that output that they generated did not always result in great outcome for the company. Something else, you know, went wrong. The specification wasn't as ex executed as planned, or an engineer didn't get it, or the marketers or salespeople you kind of, you know, changed it. So I got more obsessed with working on this outcome topic. So in looking at at processes and stuff like that, and improve that. And this is where where I have my interest in um, in understanding how how the collaboration and the system, the process works rather than the individual itself works. And this is what, and this is also why I'm, I moved into academia and, and working on understanding, you know, capabilities and organizations and how to improve that. This is also my research field. And, and that's what, uh, what keeps me going. And that's really my interest. So I'm, I'm more into designing the management. So actually, Design management is became my field. It's rather than designing an artifact, an object, mm, designing the process, a graphic. It's it's yeah, it's that process that I want to design and and improve and and uh, make the best of of its possibilities. Mm -hmm. The design of the system. I think it's sort of like the ultimate design is design of the design of a company, uh, like the, the design of how a, how a system works and organism works. Yeah, and uh, people collaborating, etc. Um, yeah, and you can design on all these levels. Right? I mean, the, yeah. there's this famous uh, four orders of design by Richard Buchanan. Maybe specialists know this. Uh, this kind of you know description of the levels of where you can design. Mm -hmm. In the, but fundamentally, there at least are three levels you can design on the artifact level. So is that's what normally designers do. Um, how, uh, design two and three dimensional objects, graphics, symbols, layouts, products, but you can also design the interaction. So the, the social fact, if you want to say so, the, the, the stuff between. Eh? So this would also be user interface or user experience design if it's about interaction or communication design. We can also design mental, men, menti facts, as they called in sociology. Yeah? So the, the mental spaces mm -hmm. the visions the the reason why which is done a lot in brand 
design, if you define the positioning of an organization and shape and give form to meaning and by articulating values and behavior sets and stuff like that. And so actually design is, is, is a super broad, it can be done everywhere. And this is a, then the other topic, which is of interest to me, is how do you bring this all together? So you have the design of the so-called menti factor, the, the raison d'etre, the why you are a company. Okay, but what does that mean for the interaction yeah, the between people and organization, yeah, yeah. but also be, the behavior of the systems? And what does that then mean for designing the artifact? And this all ideally should come together, should you know, be designed as a unity, as an entity, if um, if an organization wants to be recognized as an organization with a with a, uh, a particular personality or identity, mm-hmm. so it's complex. It's it's a complex world if if you look at it from this perspective. No, I totally agree, and it's and it's so connected, right? I mean, all of these levels kind of have to play together, right? Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you get sort of like a detachment, right? And the product is not also authentic anymore. Mm-hmm. The biggest change to drive in mean, a product development process or like in, 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 in product is to influence the product requirements, right? So having designers being involved in, in that totally uh, makes sense. Also love what he said about the meaning, right? Mm-hmm. We, um, you can help to create meaning, you know, by having, by having that, you also bring together an organization, right? Be, uh, and unite them for like a common goal. Yeah. And um, yeah. And I think meaning is is very important to organization because it's it's the fundament of why you collaborate, and um, and it's What's often misunderstood and mixed up by purpose, which is a, a hip word these days. Eh? Everybody's talking about purpose, but purpose actually means the goal of your undertaking. It's the direction you're going, and that's very very relevant for an organization to know where you're heading. Your purpose is in German, it's called Zweck. Yeah, the, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the meaning is the point of departure. It's it's why you stepped in the boat the first place. Yeah, it's like ah, oh, you know, we all want to go to sail sail the oceans, or we all want to unite in building perfect products for people, or creating services that that excel. Or we are here to create a super restaurant experience uh, centered on Dutch food, which is odd, I think. But yeah, it could be a meaning. <laughs> Then the purpose is to bring that to people, and I think I'm more the I'm, I'm more interested in in organizational meaning. So where what's what's at the core of a company? What is the um, the reason people work together? Because that is in directly linked to leadership. Uh, because leadership mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is not di- to, at least to me not something that automatically is connected to purpose very much to meaning so why are we here why do we collaborate mm-hmm. that should be a leading element in in the working together and uh, governing you know the relationships and the hierarchies and the decision making because then an organization can make sense of itself you know so, ah, you know this is why we do it and this is why we don't do that and um, and then you have this this kind of common element and that should be then leading and transfer that to design. The design is a very strong element in, in that because design helps to articulate the meaning of an organization, isn't it? You, you create a positioning, you say, oh, this is who we are. And there's this, this great example, which is often used in literature. I'm not sure if I use it in my book, but maybe I do. It's from the um, Ritz-Carlton Hotel Group, um, their motto is called uh, we are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen so that's quite meaningful i would say in the sense that you have an idea of leadership and then you can start to design around that and create everything you do based on that let's say meaning Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i love what you said also about the difference between meaning and purpose right i mean the meaning is like, why do you get in the boat in the first place? And then the, the purpose is like, you know, the, where you're heading with your, with yeah. your boat, right? Yeah. Uh, I think Deliver the goods. Great... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, you know, ship people over the ocean or whatever it is. Yeah. Your purpose is going to be. Yeah. Exactly. 
I also really love this this quote. Um, you know, design helps to articulate the meaning of a company, and I think yeah. this is I think also um, a nice way to kind of frame it. I think if some some issues that some companies have is they well they have the, if you if they are transforming, and I think this kind of connects it to your work as well, right? Mm. So they are like a company is always changing, uh, like it should ideally always be in motion. So, but then like they, they want to emphasize a new meaning, but their products still maybe tell a different story because they're in a transformation process, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. start to create a gap between what they, what the vision maybe is and maybe, and what the, where the business comes from. Mm -hmm. Is that sort of, and this, this is a problem for specifically maybe companies that have longer pro uh, development cycles, right? If you think about very complex products, for example, is there any kind of, do you see it the same? Do you do you notice something similar with maybe some of the companies you work with that you know that they could create a friction? How do you kind of deal with it? Uh, any kind of learnings on, on that? Yeah, I I I've I did work in an environment where also the production or let's say development cycles were very long, medical equipment area, um, or any anything to do with technology will take its time. And I here again, uh, you could refer to the the difference of meaning and, and, and purpose, so to say, and and how how that is dealt with in an organization. Um, I think if companies start to change their meaning, mm -hmm. they run the risk of of losing leadership because basically they are you know they're questioning themselves in why they are in the business in the first place. They become insecure. Been uh, yeah. And and th this will create a, a situation also of suboptimization, maybe or short term focus or lack of leadership, so to say, or lack of meaning will will make people tend to the purpose thing and say, oh, you know, but in the end we have to sell a product, so let's go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we might change our strategies mm -hmm. and we might change our vision, stuff like that. But I don't have time for this. And and I've seen this coming in 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 Philips crawling in. Uh, it was this called it was called the so-called shareholder value and mm -hmm. i remember in the 90s when when i was a young designer then philips when i joined was a very meaning heavy company it was very it was you know filled with the idea that um yeah technology could do marvel and could help people you know having a great life it was an mm -hmm. invention company not an innovation company, an invention company. Philips invented all the stuff that we have, <laughs> digital music and all this marvelous stuff. They had a huge lab, I think the biggest lab of the world in those days. And even their slogan was something, let's make things better. You know, that was <laughs> the, the slogan. And so the meaning was, okay, we, we understand technology and we can make great solutions. We can make inventions and this, they will help people to enjoy life or, to be better at what they do then new ceo new yeah not leadership not new management also there is often a misunderstanding that leadership is nothing to do with people leadership is the phenomena in an organization it's not people that are doing the leadership it's the meaning that is doing the leadership mm -hmm. and then so we had new management new ceo and that guy was you know he was not interested in the meaning he saw a different meaning. He thought, well, an organization is there to make money. <laughs> Shareholder mm -hmm. value was his focus. So the purpose of the organization for him was to create revenue. And with that, satisfy the shareholder. And that was his focus. Well, revenue, creating revenue never is a strategy. Mm -hmm. Creating revenue is an is a, is okay. output or an outcome of your activities. And you could really see the organization losing it altogether. All of a sudden... You had competition within the organization. Everything was focused or became focused on creating revenue, yeah, and creating uh, you know bigger margins. Well, and then we asked, well, what's the meaning of our, of our organization? And I think ever since Philips tried to find its meaning again, and in the process of it, threw away all sorts of or parts of its organization and reduced it basically to what they're doing right now. And I think it's a good example of 
you know that that if if you have a strong company you are you are consistent and persistent in pursuing your meaning what you do change and you have to change is your purpose because as you said markets are changing people are changing circumstances are changing and you what you can do or should do is be agile in reacting to the market and say oh you know this product it's not really fulfilling market or consumer needs let's adopt but you you can do that because you have a a strong point of departure if you have a strong meaning a strong focus strong vision then you apply that in order to change what you do to become more relevant and more differentiating to your customers and often i see that yeah organizations lose this mm-hmm. 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 so so i'm more of the fraction that says you know build build a strong vision strong meaning so have a strong inner self mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but be agile on the outside not agile on the inside because if you're agile on the inside i think you're creating a disturbed personality you create a, a person like a with multi personalities inside that is that is not able to focus on long term on doing something really relevant you have to be agile on the outside uh, stay fit and lean and whatever but your inner self should be should be strong and and reliant and 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 yeah consistent i think yeah mm-hmm. so the meaning is basically a one time design project but the purpose is uh multiple design projects yeah i think so or or saying meaning is some is something that evolves over time of course mm-hmm. you it, it you have never to is but ref- refine it but not like yeah. Turn it from no, red to no, blue, no, right? No, yeah. not if oh you say oh shit you know market is changing or oh there's something coming there's a big tidal wave heading towards us. Well, yeah, then let's change the purpose of what we do. Uh, think of you know we're on the ship. You know the meaning was to be out there and sail. Well, then let's throw things overboard. Let's you know turn the design of the ship to cope with the um, with, the, with the circumstances, but don't change yeah. the meaning. Yeah. Because if you do that, you change your organization, you change the leadership, and then things are lost. And and this is what I see happening a lot in organizations that managers tend to focus on purpose and on short-term activities. This is basically how, I think a bit also, how they are set up because their capability mainly is in the area of administration. So they look after things. And, um, and, th- and that's why they have a, yeah, a superficial, often a more a superficial or short-term view to these things. And then they tend to forget that meaning is something long-term, steady, you know, basic, gradual changing. And, um, and that, and that is also, I think meaning is the core of your value creation. It's, it's why, why people turn to you actually, and you might great turn out a great product. If you compare, for instance, markets which have mm-hmm. a lot of competition in them, mm-hmm. and you def- you you distinguish the different approaches of companies to be relevant on that market, then you can see that the products themselves are actually pretty similar. I mean, if you take fashion or take yeah. automotive or whatever electronics, I mean, if you look at the products themselves, then they're not that different from each other. Like cell phones, I mean, come on, I like. If you have a Samsung or an Apple, or whatever, but people don't buy that; they buy something else. They buy meaning, and I think if you would talk of, if you would argue about what's most important in an organization to create that meaning, is it management, or mm-hmm. is it design? Then, I think it's quite easy to say, or and it's also quite. Yeah, understandable for everybody to say, well, if you really want to, to create meaning, you, you by first need to design. Mm-hmm. And only after that, you can manage your organization to become more efficient and all of that. But yes. it starts all with the act of design. It's the, the, the fundament of an organization, a business is, it starts with design. It starts with defining who you are, why you are there, and maybe for who you work. Uh, so yeah, we're a bunch of people. We want to sail. So we, yeah. this is who we are. We are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. So the the beginning of an organization is design, mm-hmm. not management. Yeah, I, 
Absolutely. And I think that, I think we're going to touch on a couple of things that you, you mentioned. There. I think something we discussed also before the re recording is you said a company's future relies on their ability to design. Uh, and you mean this exact separation that you, that you pointed out here, you basically think about a company in two ways, the administration side and then the design side. The administration side, meaning the sales, the business, the management of existing processes, while the design is about defining new processes, uh, changing the, the steering wheel, uh, like you said, maybe changing uh, the purpose. I think I think that would be interesting to elaborate, but I think what what is also interesting is, I think, what you said about meaning. So how can designer be involved in shaping the meaning uh, of a company and how has it to do with what I said before in context of the, the future of a company relies on the capability to, of designing. Yeah. Um, so the, the meaning is, is a design activity that's in this so-called mental space, of course, eh? the, the menti fact of an, of an organization. Yeah. And having said that, that's, that's something that is designed, not, not per default by designers, which is also one thing that we might need to discuss is yes. there's design. And then yeah. there are designers, and they're yeah. not. This is not exactly the same. Um, so let's say a, an entrepreneur, a businesswoman who has this kind of idea about meaning. You know, I understand a people's, um, or a, let's say, an opportunity to set up a business, mm -hmm. and that 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 spark you know, of of you know an understanding, an insight that you might have on people needs. You say, I can organize people. And do something which is meaningful, because we can generate something to help to to uh, to provide to people. We can create an outcome that will will be beneficial to people, and then I can be in the business, and I can build my business cycle. And and that that activity of designing uh, this uh, meaning, uh, this 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 fundament of an organization, uh, is something where designers help very actively by articulating that meaning, in, for instance, in terms of identification elements, mm -hmm. which are needed for you know, dis, um, distributing meaning. So that could be content, that could be a slogan, as we mentioned, uh, we are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. This is a designed by somebody mm -hmm. who really understood what this organization wants to achieve and turned that mm -hmm. into a codex, a mantra, whatever you want to call it. And then there's there is this whole phenomena of identification, as I mentioned, in terms of of defining a brand with its all its entity, its corporate design elements. So defining a corporate identity, which contains a lot of elements, corporate design, corporate behavior, etc. That's also a very fundamental design undertaking where designers are also active. And ideally, this metifact goes into the interaction that the company then um, uh, picks up within itself, but also towards the market and customers and society at large, it starts to communicate. And if it's done well, this is uh, all done in line with the positioning, with the meaning. Uh, so you design your interactions, your communication, your content, and then the artifacts you produce, if you produce some, uh, like products and visuals and whatever it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um the the design for me in an organization is what what porter used to call the primary activity of an organization mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um as you just mentioned that there are these two things managing and designing actually it's pretty aligned with the porter model and the value chain model of porter where he says there's the primary activity and the secondary the support activity mm -hmm. in an organization the primary is the design activity comprises of doing everything to create something of that is relevant differentiating to customers that's like you know your your process of creating mm -hmm. uh, relevant stuff the support activity is whatever you need in order to do that so it, that comprises a manager an administrative task of course getting the resources the people the material everything that you need to run your ship basically or your organization and that's actually the tasks predominantly of managers of administrators to to do this now porter not for nothing he called the primary activity the primary activity <laughs> which is 
you know, that's, you know, the, the primary part of an organization is producing outcome that's relevant to customers. And to me, it seems that over the last years, the support activity became the primary activity in most of the organizations. It's, it, organizations are obsessed with efficiency, with control, with managerial uh, activities, and they forget that actually this is just supportive. Well, I'm saying just, it's very important, don't get me wrong, but it's supportive. So if you, and I've, and this is what I observed in, in excellent, in, in, in really excellent companies. I think these are companies that understand, yay, the prim, the primary activity is creating relevant solutions for customers and everything we do should support this. So managerial work, which are focused on, on the optimization of resource uses, for instance, should support that. And not the other way around. Not design should not support management in being, you know, effective, efficiency oriented, but the other way around. And and this is one of the things that I yeah try to work on and also support organizations in and get that focus right again. You know, so if you have if you have managers, managers should have the interest to support the design process by, you know providing optimal resources so the best people the best mm -hmm. material mm -hmm. the best processes mm -hmm. the best circumstances etc in order for the design process which comprises not only form giving but also engineering and marketing that's all in the primary design process and to make that the best of of what's possible and so when when i yes i think the 90s mm made that shift towards administration and focus for efficiency because managers thought like, you know, if I make that part of the process better, the outcome will be better in sense of, of mm -hmm. revenue generating. Um, but customers have another opinion. Uh, customers yeah, I, don't, don't buy, customers don't buy the management capability of an organization. Mm -hmm. Customers buy the design capability of an organization. Mm -hmm. It has so much gold in, in what you just said in the last minutes with so many things I would love to touch on. But I think what would be really cool for the audience if mm. you have maybe, if you can outline uh, maybe a case study uh, or some kind of project that you worked on where this process exactly happened, where you were defining the meaning and what did you learn uh, along the process in terms of what, what impact it created uh, for the company? And what kind of struggles may designers have? And they're trying to get involved in that. Yeah, yeah. I tried to outline, uh, outline that, that case in my book and made it, of course, a bit neutral, but people that know me and know the circumstance know also where the, yeah. where the case is, uh, has, uh, is derived from. But it was when I, when I picked up a job in, um, in that organization and was responsible for the design in a, in a business group which was really, you know, it was a dog business. It was a harsh competition, low interest, mainly products, consumer products, electronics, um, retail oriented. So everything that is it, tough, you know, to make a difference, not so easy. And when, when, when I joined the, also the business owner had this task of, you know, he was, he was tasked to make money. He wasn't tasked to create meaning and, and make sure that meaning went into relevant products and by that, you know, convince customers to, to enter into a loyal relationship with the company. Now, he was tasked to, to make money, to create mm -hmm. revenue margin. Now, there are different ways to go about that because funny enough, if you look at companies that are very relevant to customers and that create a lot of meaning, at least my short analysis <laughs> turned out to be, oh, these are also the companies that create the biggest margin. So actually, it's quite a good strategy to make sure that meaning can be felt in everything you do as to become extremely relevant to your target customers and, and build uh, um, on loyalty and, and build on, on that. So the the struggle that i had is is to convince managers that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. investing in design and having design 
the primary activity in doing this and create relevance for customers would be the appropriate strategy, not cost saving, not being smarter than the competition and not uh, you know hitting the customer over the head, lure the money out of its pocket and run away with it. But you know, building a qualitative product, building on identity slash meaning. Huh? So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. position yourself and then also apply excellency. So making sure that you do this in everything you do. And then you can see the pushback. Oh, but you know, this means we have to invest in design and actually we wanted to save. <laughs> so prioritizing your strategy, you know, convincing the people that investing in, in let's say, the quality of what you do and how you do it will be noticed in the market. And and that was a tough journey, but we we cha- we we could change the way of working. So initially, this business group bought a lot of products off the shelf, just labeled it and sold it, and they weren't that successful. And when we started to change that approach, build more original designs, have a, a design language that is distinctive. Um, you know, and also go all the way. So include not only the product, but also the packaging, the approach, the whole experience around it. Hey, all of a sudden, the market started to recognize it. Customers started to recognize it. And and with that, uh, it became successful. And then, uh, yeah, and lo and behold, hey, the business people could make their money. So it's something that that I think a lot of business people just, completely misunderstand the 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 impact that um good design can have on their business and yeah in the background they know it and they've heard the stories but you know they're incentivized short term quarter by quarter to turn out you know the revenue and 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 the the margin so that's why they're reluctant to invest more long term on a bigger bang that they could make and this is something that I learned hands-on in, in the business. I try to capture that story also in my book and also derive some learnings from that. Is is also what what can you do or should you do in leading design in order to change that and to improve the way you you use design as an element of yeah, making sure the meaning of your company is felt in the marketplace, is, is you know, it can be experienced in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think it's so so true what you you said that you know, and this is a struggle. Like, how do you communicate this then to the business side, right? Yeah, I think about like the business impact that this can create, right? Because it's not, it's indirect, right? So you need to mm-hmm. think around the around the corner a little bit, yeah. right? And that 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 takes an element of of risk, not not necessarily risk, but perceived risk because it's unnatural maybe to how people are educated, right? Or maybe these business people are educated, right? Yeah. In terms of like how they should act, right? So there's a perceived risk in that and it requires education. But I think especially like these days, I feel like there are so many companies who are such a great example on that. I mean, of course, um, Apple is uh, probably w- one of the companies that, you know, is really honing on the, that meaning factor. You could see it on the, on the stock market as well in terms of like the, like, you know, if, if there is... Like if there's a crisis, you know, then, you know, uh, there's a certain people, uh, you can rely on the, the audience of, 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 of customers who love the, the brand they, mm. you know, they always have been purchasing. And this is something that, that, that has a strong, you know, the, you know, the costs, et cetera, may go up and down. Right. Um, but that's something very stable. I think also now th- these days, I think if you look at, there's a company called Nomad, for example, they, they think they started with um doing batteries for you know that you can take with you uh, if you're on a trip but they built this whole brand and lifestyle around it, which is like the purpose is to empower people who are on the go right mm. and who want to always be secure and there's another company called rivian which is an automotive company uh which uh, got a lot of funding and you know they're really focusing on that they developed a pickup truck electric uh, a pickup truck mm-hmm. and um they, they they're really all about this identity they're mm-hmm. all about the, these people because if people people want to buy something they can identify with uh, can they identify with the brand what the what their the meaning is uh do i see myself sort of like as 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 part of that brand and and, and their reasoning and uh 
And uh, yeah, it's, it's such a strong element if you can create that. Mm. I think more, even more important than, you know, being, let's say, open to taking risk is having confidence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we come back to our ship again. You know, if you have strong meaning, you say, well, we, we will sail the seas and this is our meaning of our existence. It, along with that comes confidence. So if a tidal wave is heading towards you, the stronger the confidence, so the stronger the meaning, the easier it will be to overcome the the, the struggle you will have. Now, um, if if you build an organization and you want to say, hey, we want to build this resilience, you know, and this kind of you know uh, power inside the company, then uh, I think what you need more than than the, the willingness to take risk is to is to build the confidence in the people now uh, so here again it's like um i don't know what the english saying is what what gets around comes around as we i think it's the mm -hmm. this is some of the translation eh? so wie man in wald ruft so schalt es heraus as mm -hmm. we say in german uh, so if 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 employees in an organization can also see and feel that meaning because they build on some, on a strong organization which has this view on on excellency and everybody knows what you know in the end will come out it's then that's also very very important to create um yeah a qualitative organization that uh, that will build create strong outcome so Again, here is different from having a managerial approach by giving everybody an individual target and say, well, if you work well, you do this, you get a bonus. Which per default is is you know fighting everything which has to do with meaning and and you know and building a unity and building on excellency. Because if you have to provide a bonus, every organization that provides a bonus will will never achieve excellency, my opinion. Because it will set the wrong targets. Uh, it's instead of saying, "Hey, you know, our meaning is to to become who we are, and uh, and we are, you know, clear about that, and also critical amongst each us, you know, in the organization. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. We are ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen means mm -hmm. we are ladies and gentlemen as well. So mm -hmm. if you start to behave like a pirate or a break or whatever." Our employees amongst each other will connect and reconnect and 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 design, you know, a certain approach, which will be then, you know, felt um, outside. And this is also what I experience in organization myself. You know, the the different approach that people might take in the organization to what does that mean? You know, being having leadership amongst each other, mm -hmm. uh, having a common understanding of what we are there for. Um, and uh, I remember a lot of situations where I had to get out my company card, you know, show and said, listen, you know, show me your card. And then you use mine. So it's it's the same except for the name and the title. But the card is the same. And we are fighting each other for stuff that is irrelevant to our customers. If the customers would know that we are fighting for this sort of shit, they would say, yeah, they're insane. You know, Stop the waste of energy, you know. Help me become your customer and stay your customer. And, and this is, um, uh, I think, management um, is totally overestimated, if you ask me. And I, I have this feeling since I've moved in the business faculty, which is focused a lot on managerial tasks. Um, leadership is considered to be a, um, a treat of people, which is, for me, totally wrong. It's the, it's, it's the, the common of understanding in an organization so if you would stay with the ship analogy uh, then leadership is not a leader on the ship it's a ship that leads uh, it's the vessel which is yeah. the leadership you know it's the the come is the the common understanding of of meaning and why you're there so that means leading that, together right yeah being together yeah, yeah and do, do this They're leading do this. together yeah 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 leading together because then if you if you um, and this is also what there's this Approach leadership is called uh, dialog dialogical leadership, dialogische Führung, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. which is very well. It's developed, I think, predominantly in in Germany as a phenomena, which is, is relying on dialogue mm -hmm. as a leadership instrument. Uh, so you, instead of order, law in order, you do this or you do this. It it creates the 
a dialogue amongst everybody. And that means, dia means through, yeah? It means through everybody. So it connects everybody in, oh, this is how we are. Oh, this is how we design. This is, uh, And then maybe also, oh, this is how we manage uh, in that order, you know? It's like, this is how we work. And that would be the goal of, um, of a, I think, an, a good running organization. And design is, uh, in that respect, is is crucial. It's it's articulating all of this, making it tangible, you know, not only outside, but also inside the organization. Mm -hmm. As you said, right. identity is, is one of the outcomes of, uh, of that, of meaning. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I also really love this quote that you had, um, about uh, one of the companies, I think that you were referring to, uh, we are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. because I think it, it kind of tells, it, it it almost tells like how you design meaning, right? Because uh, it's kind of like a primary example because you mm. you have the audience and you have yourself yeah. and you basically say, well, we are similar and we are the same, yeah. right? Yeah. That means automatically we de we are the same like you, so we understand you, we design for you, you are part of us. Uh, so it, it, it really emphasizes this, this um, uh, identity factor. And um, yeah. yeah. And the, the sociological brand development relies on what is called a bond, customer mm -hmm. bond. And, um, and I think if you are in for a business on the long, whole so not just you know surviving every quarter but if you say well you know on the long run i will be more successful by building a customer bond and having a high level of loyalty in my customer base then then you have to have to adopt this uh, approach and and making sure that you consider yourself being in a relationship with your customer and not only in in terms of um, providing uh, a uh, goods for transaction because that's then that's too short-sighted and also will not create this bond and it also means that if something out there that i think you mentioned it eh, if something out there changes in the marketplace um, the customers will be gone but if they have a bond with you they will stick also in dire straits you know they will stick to you and and try to sustain your company because they realize that uh, without the company they will lose something themselves which is of course an ideal situation, mm -hmm. not always possible, but yeah, there, I think that that's what you see, you know, you, you, you need something, maybe you need a new jacket and because the other one, you know, you tore it or whatever, it's gone. It's not repairable or, or you move to, uh, to another country, you need a thicker jacket or whatever. What sort of jacket would you pick? I mean, they're all the same, isn't it? They all have the similar shapes and forms and whatever. And increasingly, because I had to do this last winter, I needed a winter jacket. So I went into the store and, you know, this whole row of jackets. And actually, you know, looking at them design-wise, they're not that different. Okay, there were some, mm -hmm. they were too, whatever, fancy for me. So you rely on... On your reference set and on what you what you have in your mind and where yeah. you can relate to, and uh, and yeah, some some people would say for me important is the price. Yes, and that could be, and then the company will win that designs an experience which has a a super price but still will deliver an experience which is clearly defined, clearly differentiated with a clear yeah. identity. And say, okay, then then I'll go for the. Yeah. The price, I can only afford that much. If the price is not important, it's going to be well, similar. the identity. Yeah. So you pick your brand. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, that's, and that's what companies want. Hey, you pick me, <laughs> not them, pick me, which is okay. Yeah. I, mean, I think this is what, what good competition is all about. You know, may the best win. Especially if you have, have... Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, since we're different as customers, eh, we we have different people with different needs. Um, yeah, a market can can thrive on that and provide different solutions for different people. And I think that's what um, a good economy is all about: is 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 providing solutions for people, and then also 
with that, you know, improving the overall, so trying to be less impactful, you know, and, you know, improve on, on everything you, you can do and, and then you become relevant and then you can build a bond. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, specifically if you have a, a tight market or similar products, right? I mean, then sort of, then you, then like the, the meaning and sort of the, the bond that you may can create with the, the audience in that short moment is uh, basically what sets you uh, apart and then also allows to actually for allow for even more margins than in the long run right yeah. i mean uh, if if we think about apple if we think about the norman brand i was mentioning mm. Rivian, etc i think uh, you know there, there are already a lot of cars there are already a lot of uh, uh, mobile batteries uh, a lot of smartphones yeah but mm. um so if that makes it uh, you know stand out so um, Jan, I would love to keep, keep talking to you. It's like, we <laughs> I feel like we just scratching the surface and I think the, the yeah. conversation is so interesting. Um, but I think we need to wrap it up because of time. Uh, mm -hmm. so just in behalf of the audience, really thank you for being a part of, uh, this podcast and sharing all of your amazing learnings here. Thanks Sebastian. It's been a pleasure and uh, maybe we can catch up later and dive deeper into this phenomena of design in companies which is the primary function <laughs> absolutely and just a little shout out also to the audience uh, the book leading design also we're going to put that in the show notes so if you want to check out the book then uh, just click on the link uh, it's going to be on amazon and um, as well as some other links about yourself uh, your website etc for people to connect to you yeah okay thanks a lot so much yep. All right, that was the episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments about your thoughts and biggest learnings from the episode. I'm always super curious about that. You can also tag me in a post about your biggest takeaway and share your insights with others to pass on your learnings. If the episode provided you a lot of value, make sure to follow, subscribe and share it with friends and colleagues so they also have the chance to learn and grow. Until next time, cheers.